Book 5, Chapter 169, Persuasion. This chapter is updated by novels.pl. After understanding Su Chen's plan, the rest became much easier to take care of. Ian Cliff provided her with a way to stay in contact, and then Zixian Yao returned to the Heavenly Fragrance Pavilion. In comparison to trying to escape, trying to go back was much easier. Once Zixian Yao returned to the Heavenly Fragrance Pavilion, the clone could find a time when no one was paying attention to disperse. The sudden disappearance of Zixian Yao might cause a momentary panic, but that was acceptable, because then Zixian Yao's actual body would enter from outside. It would be as if they had merely lost track for a moment of a target they were supposed to keep an eye on but that target hadn't actually escaped. The panic would very quickly be replaced with relief. However, the harpies never would have imagined that the truly shocking development would take place shortly thereafter. While Sky City was still in an uproar trying to find Su Chen, Leo Country was also beginning to be stirred up. Sky City was attacked by a desolate beast. Losses include over 200,000 casualties and countless resources critical for battle. Harpy General Knight Violence was killed in battle. At this moment, he is the most influential casualty that we know of. The Midnight Corps suffered serious losses. Seven of the Mother Goddess sect's bishops were killed in action. Legendary Arcana Master Heavenly Sun Catcher was killed in action. The Lightning God Cannon was damaged due to repeated use. Submerged Camp was totally annihilated. Six out of twelve Titan class puppets and nearly a hundred Battalion class puppets were destroyed. They have suffered the loss of countless resources including those used to construct sun-shattering cannons and annihilation bolts, as well as a few billion origin stones. The origin energy demonic tower was partially destroyed by the attack, and its ability to fly is seriously limited. They sustained relatively few losses of their floating boats, but one of their imperial flagships was downed and apparently cannot be repaired. Report after report concerning the situation in Sky City fell onto Li Wuai's desk like snowflakes in a violent storm. This wouldn't have been such a big deal. After all, the Harpy's attack didn't really affect Leo Country much. However, some people were proposing that Leo Country should take advantage of the opportunity to attack the Harpies and seize their territory. The thought of declaring war also entered Li Wuai's mind. The reports continued to pile on. So, we should take advantage of the opportunity to mobilize our troops and demonstrate the might of our country. For he makes it sound so easy. Li Wu Ai harumphed and tossed the scroll aside. The political hall was where Li Wu Ai and his imperial subjects discussed political matters. There were a total of 27 subjects, but there were only three people who really participated head of political affairs Wang Rang, head of ceremonies Chang Rong, and head of military affairs Li Wu Ai. The head of political affairs typically had more authority in this setting. At this moment, Wang Rang was sitting just below Li Wu Ai. He said with a slight smile, an army becomes outdated if it is never used. It's quite normal that they are pushing so hard to fight, there would be something wrong if they were afraid of battle. But for so many strategically important pieces of information to surface all at once is quite rare. Li Wu Ai chuckled. So you noticed it too. It seems that Zhu Chen Huen has been quite busy these past few days. A young man standing to the side said with some surprise. Hasn't the Zhu clan already entered into an agreement with Sky Country and obtained the right to do business there? They should be against the conflict, shouldn't they? Why would they be so proactive? The young man's name was Li Dokian, and he was Li Wu Ai's son, as well as Liu Country's crown prince. Wang Rang replied, Apparently, Zhu Chen Huen's daughter, Zhu Xian Yao, has been confined within Harpy territory. Li Dokian hurriedly asked, Zuxian Yao? It's her? Why would the Harpies want to capture her? Li Dokian had seen Zuxian Yao a few times before. Both he and Li Dohong had been mesmerized by her beauty and had tried to pursue her in the past. Unfortunately, Zuxian Yao wasn't interested in either of them. Even so, Li Dokian found it impossible to forget about her, just like his little brother Li Dohong. When he heard that Zuxian Yao had been confined within Harpy territory, he immediately went on high alert. Li Wu Ai was very displeased with this reaction and glared fiercely at his son. Li Dokian knew that he had stepped out of line and lowered his head, returning to his position. Wang Rang, however, seemed not to care at all. He shook his head and replied, 
Zhu Chen Huan came looking for me earlier, based on what he told me, they were doing this on purpose to try and find a way to mobilize the troops, but I can't help but feel like this old man isn't being totally sincere about the situation. Unfortunately, the rift between us humans and the harpies is simply too great, and it's very difficult for my men to get more information. I really don't know what is going on over there. As such, I can only believe old Zhu temporarily that he was willing to sacrifice his granddaughter as bait for the sake of the country. Li Wu Ai Haramft, old Zhu is like an incredibly sly fox. You can't trust what he says. I think there's a very high chance that Zhu Xian Yao has gotten herself into some trouble, and that he needs our help to get her out. When Li Dokian heard this, he grew agitated. Father, Li Wu Ai said indifferently, if you dare ask me about saving her, I'll break your legs. Li Dokian fell silent immediately. Wang Rang chuckled. Zhu Chen Huan is quite sly, but we have already confirmed that Sky City was indeed attacked by a desolate beast. Marching on the harpies is quite a rare opportunity. And Zhu Xian Yao is indeed a good excuse to start a war with. Zhu Chen Huan wasn't lying about that, at least. Even though they were suspicious that they were being used. The truth was the truth. An experienced diplomat like Wang Rang wouldn't mind being used by someone as long as he received enough benefits during the process. In comparison to Wang Rang, Li Wu Ai obviously had more reservations. Mobilizing an army is not hard, but what should we do after that? Li Wu Ai drummed his finger on the table as he muttered. First of all, are we sure that we can be victorious? Is it possible we can wipe out their country? Also, what will we obtain? And what price will we pay? If the battle doesn't go our way, what effect will it have on Leo country? Finally, what response will the other races and countries have if we do attack? These questions fully demonstrated the foresight and thoughtful consideration that was necessary for any ruler of a country. Even Wang Rang was taken aback by these questions. After a moment, he replied, if the reports we are receiving are true. The Harpy's military strength is much weaker. Purely in terms of combat strength, we have a very high chance of winning. But wiping them out completely will be impossible. Sky City was simply too powerful. If it could even destroy a desolate beast, there was no way Leo Country alone would be powerful enough to take it on, even if the city was badly damaged and incapacitated. If they couldn't wipe out Sky City, then they would need to consider things a little more carefully particularly how the other party would respond. In addition, once Leo mobilized their troops, how would the other countries respond? That was a necessary consideration as well. How would the enemy races react? If they mishandled this situation, it was entirely possible that Leo country would find themselves stabbed in the back by the other countries or races. What would they do then? That would be quite the joke. In any case, it was necessary to be both prudent and cautious when it came to declaring war on an enemy. Su Chen wanted to provoke Leo country into putting pressure on Eternal Night, but that was still a bit too idealistic. Actually making this happen would not be easy, after all, Su Chen was only one person. He didn't have the final say in starting this war. Thankfully, Su Chen hadn't only relied on a momentary weakness of the harpies to convince Li Wu Ai. Political matters carried great weight but they were often carried out with underhanded tactics. Sometimes, a few simple maneuvers would resolve an immense problem. Sometimes, bribing someone would be quite effective. Li Wu Ai was incredibly strategical, but no matter how smart he was, it was impossible for him to anticipate that Zhu Chen Huan had bribed Wang Rang. And even if he had noticed, he could only pretend not to have noticed. Wang Rang was also no idiot. He clearly understood that to convince Li Wu Ai to make a move, he would need to come up with a persuasive reason. This reason could not be a lie or an exaggeration. It needed to actually be true. It was for this reason that he had openly admitted that Zhu Chen Huan was likely not telling the truth from the very beginning. Only by getting his emperor to believe that he had no private motives would it become easy to carry out the plan. After confirming that Liu Country could never destroy Sky City. Wang Rang thought for a moment before saying calmly, I understand your majesty's worries, but Leo Country and the Harpies have never been friends. We have been at odds for tens of thousands of years, and we have fought countless battles both small and large. The enmity has been around for thousands of years. This problem will not grow out of hand because of one or two fights. Even if we can't destroy the Harpies completely, 
whether or not we attack them won't stop them from attacking us. Wang Rang made it clear that the harpies and humans had never been friends. Any peace was only temporary. As such, there was no need to worry about offending the harpies, because the harpies would definitely take advantage of such an opportunity if it were to present itself to them. Li Wu Ai nodded when he heard this. That's true. Whether we fight or not, we will never be friends. Only by kicking them when they're down will we be able to make things easier on ourselves. Wang Rang continued, I'm not too worried about the other countries either. We humans are relatively unified due to the common threat. There shouldn't be any internal conflict. I fear that there may still be ambitious, duplicitous individuals out there, Li Wu Ai said. Of course he was very clear about the internal condition. The human race was relatively unified but there were always some people with unquenchable ambition. If those people tried to take advantage of the opportunity to spring into action, it was entirely possible that Leo country would suffer an incredible blow. It was never wise to place your hopes on someone's integrity. So we still need to ally with others. The seven human countries are no strangers to allying with one another when the situation demands it. Now that the harpies are much weaker due to the desolate beast's might, it's the perfect opportunity for us to strike. Li Wu Ai frowned, I'm just afraid that none of the other countries will agree. Wang Rang chuckled, not if you ask them to mobilize their armies. But if you invite them to share in the spoils, they would be delighted. Share in the spoils. Li Wu Ai was stunned. Yes, share in the spoils. Apart from the harpies territory, their resources, and the treasures of the larger clans, has your majesty heard about the new hidden treasure that was just discovered in harpy territory? New hidden treasure? Yes. It's called something like the Halcyon Wing treasure. Apparently, this harpy was one of the captives that we let go in an exchange. After returning to the harpy's territory, he stirred up quite the commotion, looting Jade Clear Mist's secret treasure realm, fate's hands and the mother goddess sect in rapid succession before burying them in a hole outside of Sky City. Wang Rong chuckled. After a moment, he added on, based on preliminary estimates, that treasure is worth no less than three billion origin stones. Li Wu Ai felt his heart lurch uncontrollably when he heard this number, three billion. He sucked in a breath of cold air. Yes, just outside of Sky City. Is the information accurate? It's already spread throughout all of Sky City and they have been constantly sending out soldiers to scout the area. It's almost certain that this information is true, Wang Rang replied. A sum of three billion is more than enough to peak empty mountains and water sheen's interests. Just like Su Chen had used Sky City's weakness to lure Leo country into sending out troops, Wang Rang had chosen to use a similar method. He first tossed out the bait then let Li Wu Ai make his own decision about the situation. Su Chen had created a rumor about the Halcyon Wing secret treasure to bait Leo country into sending out troops and giving them a reason to mobilize. Unexpectedly, Wang Rang used it to drag Empty Mountain and Water Sheen into the mix. In some sense, the two of them were quite similar. They were willing to use any method to carry out their goal and weren't afraid of making the situation larger. Su Chen had no qualms about starting a war to save Zuxian Yao, and Wang Rang had no qualms about making the conflict bigger for the sake of obtaining Zu Chen Huen's promised benefits. Political figures were typically not idiots, but they were usually greedy, and their greed would result in them making stupid decisions. Of course, whether or not their decisions were stupid depended on the outcome of the battle. If you succeeded, you were smart, and if you failed, you were stupid. No one would care about what had transpired behind the scenes. Book 5, Chapter 170, Tenacity This chapter is updated by novels.pl While Li Wu Ai was still discussing this matter with his political chamber, Su Chen was busy taking matters into his own hands. All he was doing was carrying out assassinations left and right. Actually, Su Chen had never really cared much for this way of doing things, but he had no choice. He needed to give himself a plausible reason for remaining in Sky City. If he wanted to protect Zuxian Yao, Su Chen needed to remain in Sky City so that Eternal Knight would hold on to hope until the humans were putting so much pressure on Eternal Knight that he had no choice but to let Zuxian Yao go. On the other hand, it would cause Eternal Knight to grow suspicious if Su Chen remained in Sky City for too long, 
Now that he had managed to escape from Kellister's detection, as such, he needed to remain active. Even if his actions were a bit suicidal, he needed to demonstrate that he had a purpose in remaining here. Robbing people had become harder, so assassinating people was an acceptable alternative. Golden Blaze's casual comment had given Su Chen enough reason to move. The death of Sky Catching Prison's warden, Divine Feather Weave was a huge shock. They couldn't get in contact with him, but instead of keeping himself hidden, he had actually come out to assassinate other harpies. What was he trying to accomplish? Was this a challenge? Did he know that the Zha clan was already in their hands or not? All of the high status harpies could only wonder, but no matter how they thought about it, they never came to an answer. The main issue now was that their opponent's bloodthirst seemed to have been aroused. In the following days, he had actually assassinated two more high-status harpies. Hunting harpies and looting strategic locations were different in nature. The harpies could set up spatial lockdown formations at Sky City's strategically important locations to deal with light-shaking phantom, but none of those high-status harpies could carry a spatial lockdown formation with them. As such, Su Chen was basically targeting one of their major weaknesses. Su Chen hadn't done so earlier because it wouldn't benefit him at all. It was only natural that he had had no interest at that point in time. But now, these assassinations would serve a purpose, and it appeared that he was really getting into it. In the span of just ten or so days, around eight high-ranking harpies had been murdered. Sky City was in turmoil as a result, since the harpies had finally discovered that. Despite the fact that they had managed to deal with a desolate beast, a disguised human had managed to infiltrate their ranks, and there seemed to be nothing they could do against him. Of course, that didn't mean they were completely at his mercy. News about the Zaklan's arrival reached Su Chen's ears again and again, but Su Chen ignored them and didn't ask about them, as if he was totally unaware and he made no attempt to get into contact with them. This gave the harpies a great headache. If their opponent made no attempts to negotiate or get in contact with the Zha clan, there was no way they could anticipate what he was thinking, and the second half of the plan was basically impossible to carry out. Eternal Knight's thought process was very thorough, but Halcyon Wing Streak's actions made the harpies question whether they had captured the wrong person for the first time. That wouldn't have been such a big deal. But the problem was that this would create problems down the road. Just as the commotion in Harpy territory had not gone unnoticed by the humans, what the humans were doing couldn't escape the attention of the Harpies either, especially if they were never planning on keeping it a secret in the first place. Within the Perpetual Daylight Castle, Eternal Knight sat on his throne, listening to his subordinates discuss and debate. News of our battle with the Thousand Poisons Toad has already spread. The humans appear to be crying out for war. Li Wu Ai has already ordered Wang Rang into the palace three times to discuss things, and it appears that Li Wu Ian has also received orders. The soldiers guarding the auspicious dragon border are merely there as a distraction. Zhu Chen Huen has gone to the capital and is currently activating his connections to convince the other nobles to mobilize. Zhu Xian Yao appears to be the primary excuse for this. We've heard rumors that Li Wu Ai has contacted Empty Mountain and Water Sheen. It appears that he will be allying with the two of them to increase their military strength. News has come from the capital that Halcyon Wing Streak was one of the hostages that Li Wu Ai had agreed to release in an exchange for the purposes of disrupting our society. Report after report came in causing even the unshakable Eternal Knight to begin to feel a headache coming on. Empty Mountain and Water Sheen were the two countries under the least pressure because they were behind the front lines of the four countries. As such, they were also the most likely to mobilize their troops. If the three countries combined strength, the Harpies would have no way of resisting. Of course, they could hole up in Sky City and defend themselves. However, they would lose a lot of the territory outside of Sky City which was also impossible for them to accept. And once they lost the steady stream of resources coming in from the outskirts of Harpy territory, Sky City's production alone would have a difficult time of keeping up with the rate of consumption. Even the strongest defense would eventually collapse without any ability to mount an offense. This was also why the Harpies placed so much importance on the floating points plan. Sky City was powerful but it was surrounded on all sides by enemies because it had been constructed in the middle of territory belonging to other races. Your Majesty, 
The most important item currently is to send a diplomatic envoy to Leo country and convince them not to mobilize their troops one of the subjects proposed. Eternal Knight Haramft, if the wolf wants to eat, can you negotiate with it? All of the imperial subjects were stunned. Eternal Knight said, the only way to deal with a hungry wolf is to fight it off so that it knows this meat is not easy to eat. Even if it does manage to take a bite. We need to make it pay a bloody price. Send word to the Chaos Tower and the Harpy Star to head for the Origin Light Castle and assume the Trigram Formation. Prepare for battle. Of the Harpy's four floating points, Eternal Knight had chosen to send three of them off in the direction of Leo Country. His determination to show strength was obvious. However, this decision didn't put anyone at ease. Apart from the humans, the Harpies were also enemies with the beasts and the Oshinids. The Osinids were terrorized by demonic beasts in the sea and were in no condition to pose much of a threat. They were the weakest of the five intelligent races. However, the beasts the Harpies had to deal with were under Sovereign Inferno's control. Now that Sovereign Inferno's son was captive in Harpy territory, the beasts were also probably getting ready to spring into action. The Origin Energy Demonic Tower alone could not withstand the beast invasion. But no one said this aloud. Eternal Knight was obviously tearing down the eastern wall to rebuild the western one. No matter how the beasts responded, the humans needed to be dealt with first. If that's the case, then we have no choice I suppose. The subjects all agreed. In the southern regions of Sky City, a fierce battle had just concluded. After slaughtering the final guard, Su Chen reached into the carriage and grabbed the official, hauling him out and saying, look into my eyes, you bandit. The official still wanted to mount some resistance, but when he saw Su Chen's pitch black, mysterious eyes, and a powerful will invaded his mind, he began to howl and writhe with pain. After a brief moment, the official collapsed on the ground, completely motionless, as if he had died. A moment later, Su Chen unleashed a swath of black flames, which surged forth and devoured the harpy leaving behind nothing but ashes on the ground. This shadow flame was incredibly intense, clearly demonstrating Su Chen's strength. However, Su Chen had no happiness on his face. By taking that official's memories, Su Chen was able to confirm what Eternal Knight's decision had been. This vexed him immensely. Eternal Knight's decision would cause the battle to be fought further away from Sky City which was a problem for Su Chen. There was no such thing as an impenetrable plan, like a game of chess. Everyone wanted to be the player and not the pawn. As the ruler of an entire race, Eternal Knight was a chess player. How could he allow himself to be led around by the nose by someone else? He didn't know whether the commotion over in human territory was due to Su Chen's interference but he could sense a sinister aura in the storm brewing. This was also why he had chosen to fight fire with fire. Did you think I would be afraid just because we were weakened after a fight with a desolate beast? Did you think you could take advantage of me? Don't even dream about it. Even if we harpies die, we will die by the sword. Your humans think you can scare us so easily? He actually didn't care much about Zixian Yao. In this political gambit, Zixian Yao was merely a symbolic piece. He had no idea that Zixian Yao was the source of all of this turmoil. In this sense, Su Chen's plan had both succeeded and failed. He had successfully tricked Eternal Knight, but he had failed because, despite the process taking place without a hitch, the outcome left much to be desired. Fine, Eternal Knight, you refuse to lower your head unless you're beaten to death, then I'll just have to beat you to death. A trace of savagery appeared in Su Chen's eyes. At this moment, Harpy pursuers had appeared behind him. Su Chen didn't waste any time speaking. His figure flickered and disappeared, reappearing in Maya's room. Because he had placed a clone in the room, Maya never knew that Su Chen had even left. At the moment, they were happily conversing with Golden Blaze. Perhaps because they had gotten to know each other during the past few days, and because Su Chen had never done anything malicious to them, Maya began to let go of his fear. At this point, they were able to laugh and joke with each other. As Su Chen returned, he heard Maya say, Then my father bent me over and spanked me hard. I never saw that clock again after that. The room was immediately filled with laughter. Golden Blaze was the only one who noticed Su Chen's return. He glanced at Su Chen and chuckled, 
you're back, old Meyer was just telling us about how he once used withering liquid to lubricate his father's clock when he was younger. This is too interesting. I didn't know that the usually stoic craftsmen could have such an amusing side to them. Craftsmen also belong to the intelligent races. We also feel joy, anger, and sorrow. Old Meyer said sincerely. Then what about you? Have you ever shared such amusing experiences with your father before? Su Chen asked Golden Blaze. No, father was always. Golden Blaze was just about to reply when he suddenly realized something. He turned to stare at Su Chen, stunned. Why are you asking me this? Su Chen didn't reply. He walked towards where Golden Blaze was sitting staring intently at him. Golden Blaze stared at Su Chen in shock. You, what exactly are you planning on doing? Su Chen suddenly reached out and grabbed Golden Blaze's arm. He said, this will hurt a little. Try and endure. What? Golden Blaze was stunned. With a flash of cold steel, Golden Blaze's arm had been cut off. A-H-H-H. Golden Blaze howled in pain and attempted to run, but Su Chen used his other hand to press Golden Blaze down keeping him from running. Hey, hey, don't be so nervous. My hand, you cut off my hand. Golden Blaze bellowed. Don't be so nervous. It'll grow back. Here, drink this. It will stop hurting very soon. Don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. Su Chen hurriedly pulled out a vial of medicine and tossed it to Golden Blaze. Golden Blaze didn't want to drink it, but he couldn't resist Su Chen's pressure. Meyer and his two sons were dumbfounded by the scene that had just unfolded before their eyes. Why? Golden Blaze whimpered. He didn't dare resist Su Chen. All he could do was cry. Cry like a child. However, after drinking the medicine, it was true that the pain began to subside. I just want to know if your father loves you enough, Su Chen replied. He carefully wrapped the hand up. Book 5 Chapter 171, Ascension. This chapter is updated by Novels.pl. On the day that he lost his arm, Golden Blaze sat inside his room and cried. Even though he was physically mature, his emotions were not. Even so, suffering was the best whetstone. On this day, Golden Blaze finally began to mature. He realized what it felt like to have his life in someone else's hands. And he also realized what kind of person he was dealing with now. Meyer and his family also seemed to come to their senses. Perhaps Su Chen's carefree demeanor had slightly deceived Meyer and his family, causing them to treat Su Chen and Golden Blaze quite warmly. However, when Meyer and his wife saw Golden Blaze lose his hand, they realized what these friends or relatives of theirs were really like. They quickly gave up on their fantastical thoughts. Even Maya's children learned on that day what terror was. The two mischievous children immediately became incredibly obedient. They listened attentively and behaved sensibly, and they appeared to cleave to their parents. It was as if they had matured overnight. However, Su Chen appeared to be totally oblivious. He continued to treat the family with the utmost politeness as if he wasn't a bandit, an assassin, one of the most wanted criminals in Sky City at the moment for the havoc he had wreaked on the harpies. His behavior was quite refined, and his words were courteous. He would give them treats from time to time, and he would thank them for their hospitality with what appeared to be a modicum of embarrassment. However, none of them looked down on him as a result as they were disillusioned with the gentle front that he put on. They had fully realized that behind this calm demeanor was a ruthlessness befitting of his status as Sky City's most wanted criminal. A day later, Golden Blaze's limb grew back. This hand was still part of the body of the three-legged golden bird after all. Su Chen appeared to congratulate him. Three days later, Su Chen stopped his assassination missions because he had discovered via the origin bone scepter that Eternal Knight had found a way to deal with him. He had come into possession of a spatial lockdown formation that could be placed within a carriage and that would prevent him from using like shaking phantom. Eternal Knight had made plans to bait Su Chen into a trap. However, Su Chen was able to cheat by using the origin bone scepter and discovered the trap before it could be sprung, which was why he had stopped his activity. Illusion techniques, like shaking phantom, and the origin bone scepter were all things that Su Chen relied on to survive in Sky City. With these with crutches at Su Chen's disposal, it was only natural that there was nothing Eternal Knight could do about him. Su Chen finally had a moment to rest, 
as he had ceased from many destructive activities on the Harpies, if it weren't for the fact that Kalisdor was able to determine that Halcyon Wing Streak was definitely still in Sky City, the Harpies probably would have thought that he had run away. Of course, Su Chen hadn't just been sitting around idly, instead, he began to continue his research and experimentation. Only an ambitious person like Su Chen would have the heart to perform research while in enemy territory. After all, he had done research while trapped in the Thousand Poisons Mountain for a year. Now was no exception. Perhaps because of his good preparation in the past, Su Chen found that his research was incredibly fruitful. On the fifth day since he had ceased all destructive activities, Su Chen made a huge breakthrough. He had finally managed to fill in the last missing piece of how to reach the spirit burning realm. More specifically, Su Chen probably could have reached the spirit burning realm earlier. It was just that Su Chen wanted to come up with a more complete method, which was why he had waited until this moment. Outside of Sky City, Su Chen was standing at a high altitude location nearly 30,000 feet away from Sky City. The wind was bone piercingly cold here. Most shockingly, the clouds here possessed high concentrations of chilly energy so much so that the cold energy emanating from the clouds could ignore barriers and directly permeate a person's body. It greatly affected an origin chi scholar's ability to move as they pleased. There was also a unique life form that lived in this kind of environment known as frost demons. Frost demons were an extremely weird life form that had no physical body. They purely existed in an ethereal form. For this reason, they could ignore all origin energy attacks and silently invade a person's mind settling there and slowly devouring it. It was through this devouring process that they would gain a physical body. As such, most origin Chi scholars could only kill them after allowing a portion of their mind to be eaten. Whether or not they would survive depended on their personal vitality. The process of having one's brain eaten would take about three days. In other words, with no other way to resolve the situation. Anyone whose brain had been devoured would need to endure three days of pain before dying. This was why frost demons were also known as brain devouring parasites. Even high tier origin chi scholars and arcana technique masters had a hard time dealing with these illusory creatures. However, Su Chen had voluntarily chosen to remain in this place. He was going to attempt to make a breakthrough here. As he sat at the top of this elevated precipice, Su Chen began to sense himself falling into a deep tranquility. His heart became still, and his entire being had entered a realm without ego. Spirit burning realm cultivators, after all, needed to light the fire in their spirits. Unlike the light shaking realm, breaking into the spirit burning realm would result in a massive increase in consciousness power. The intangible consciousness power would be given real substance, allowing the cultivator to form their divine palaces. Because of the unique properties of consciousness, humans needed to create eight consciousness palaces, which were known as the spirit burning palaces. Forming the first was undoubtedly the most difficult. The first palace was known as Abundant Revolution. It signified the beginning of the spirit burning realm, and it was also when Origin Chi scholars would take off their old shackles and start anew. Transforming something illusory into something physical was impossible to do without an extremely solid foundation. This was also the reason why the first palace was called Abundant Revolution. It was the beginning of an abundant hope for those who reached that stage. Giving consciousness physical substance was not easy. Not only did you need a vast amount of consciousness power, but you also needed a strong will and enough energy to mold and temper that consciousness power to give it form. Before, there was only one way to breach the spirit burning realm, amass a large quantity of consciousness power, then use the power of a bloodline to temper and mold it. However, Su Chen had managed to find a different path that was actually even more effective. He chose to calm his mind and harmonize himself with nature. Yes, rather than using bloodline power to temper himself, he merged his consciousness with the environment around him, using the power of nature to temper himself. To accomplish this, he needed to unleash his consciousness as much as possible and spread it out which was totally different than trying to use a bloodline to forcefully compress a consciousness together. Su Chen allowed his consciousness to spread as he attempted to sense his surroundings. The cold air penetrated his body, allowing him to clearly sense the power in the environment, which he drew into his body to temper himself. Of course, 
this was much easier said than done. This process required incredible control over one's consciousness power, emotional state, harmonized by a special technique, a method to draw and direct the chaotic, free-spirited energy from the surroundings, a method to compress that energy into a divine palace, and finally, a way to prevent the power of nature from penetrating too far into his body and causing hidden damage, because this was a totally different cultivation technique there was a need to start from the beginning and go through the entire process again. Su Chen needed to figure out each step and adjust the process accordingly. In fact, he had actually developed seven or eight different techniques to facilitate the breakthrough process. Shi Kai Wang had assisted him in each one of the techniques so far, but this spirit burning realm cultivation technique was truly Su Chen's own creation. It was the result of decades of hard work, so even though the outcome was quite incredible, it was also not a surprise, as Su Chen activated his consciousness compression technique, Su Chen's consciousness began to condense. A storm began to brew around him, forming a vortex of energy that began to enter Su Chen's body through every pore before escaping through his nose and mouth. This flow of cold energy would then re-emerge with the vortex and eventually enter Su Chen's body again resulting in a conserved cycle of energy. This was a cycle Su Chen had brought about, but it was also a natural one. In that moment, Su Chen's internal revolution and the external cycle seemed to coalesce, forming a massive outline of a palace in Su Chen's mind as a result. Su Chen's abundant revolution palace was very different from most people's. It wasn't just larger, because what really determined the true strength of these palaces was their detail. The more intricately adorned a divine palace was, the stronger it would be. Most origin Shi scholars' divine palaces appeared to have been carved out of a large chunk of stone. They appeared quite majestic but also crude, like a statue created by a ravager. Su Chen's, however, was a work of art. His palace was octagonal and built on a jade platform, which was surrounded by guardrails. Various statues had been placed on top of the guardrails. These were not mere statues, these were demonic beasts formed out of concentrated consciousness energy. Su Chen had studied countless bloodlines, even though he hadn't selected any of them to become his bloodline, Su Chen understood the principles behind the bloodlines of each demonic beast represented here, which meant that he was also able to use them. Now that he had completed a divine palace, he was even closer to the source of these bloodlines, as he would be able to form illusory images of these beasts. In future battles, the support of the Divine Palace would make it much easier for Su Chen to form this illusory images, which would fight by his side. Of course, they would be weaker than true demonic beasts, but they would possess some of the beasts' unique properties and characteristics. Above the abundant Revolution Palace hung eight chains which appeared to extend into an unknown location. Those chains connected the palace to Su Chen's sea of origin energy. Via their divine palaces, spirit burning realm cultivators could directly obtain energy from their sea of origin energy, but the rate at which they could do so was limited to the rate of transmission. Most abundant Revolution Palaces would only have one chain connected to their origin sea meaning eight chains in total for eight palaces. Su Chen, however, had eight thick chains connected to a single palace, and the chains were covered in profound inscriptions. These would further enhance their transmission capabilities. The front steps, the tiles, the awnings, and the entrances were all aesthetically designed by an architect who appeared to have quite an imagination. As a result, the divine palace exuded an aura of strength. The moment that it was completed, it began to sink, eventually settling in Su Chen's sea of knowledge. The abundant revolution palace was complete. It represented an official breakthrough into the spirit burning realm, and it served as the foundation for forming the other seven divine palaces. The moment it completed, Su Chen's consciousness began to expand as his field of view began to widen. His perception had heightened, and his consciousness was much nimbler than before. Su Chen activated his origin energy eyes and observed the origin energy flowing past him. He reached out with a few consciousness tendrils and attempted to gently coerce them into his body. Before, Su Chen had needed physical contact to absorb origin energy. Now, he could do it easily with but a thought. And that wasn't all. He could sense a shadowy presence encroaching on him. It was a frost demon. A frost demon was hiding in the back of his mind inconspicuously, 
doing its best to try and infiltrate Su Chen's mind and eat his brains. It was formless and impossible to touch. However, Su Chen didn't need to wait for it to start eating his brain to do anything to it, because he wasn't a common origin Qi scholar. He was a spirit burning realm cultivator. Boom! The abundant revolution palace began to resonate. A streak of consciousness power shot forth. The frost demon dissipated in a cloud of smoke. Book 5, Chapter 172, Leader This chapter is updated by Novels.pl The fifth day after Golden Blaze's arm had been cut off, Su Chen successfully reached the Spirit Burning Realm. He became the first Spirit Burning Realm cultivator across the entire primordial continent without a bloodline. Unfortunately, no one was present to bear witness to such a tremendous accomplishment. There was no fanfare or wild applause. The only thing that greeted Su Chen was the sight of the setting sun. Even so, this was reality. Many incredible inventions all disappeared silently. For some reason, Su Chen felt a trace of worry surface in his heart in the moment that he broke through. This worry seemed to come out of nowhere. Seven days later, news came from the Harpy's northern border. The beast wave had arrived. The Harpies were immediately thrown into turmoil. Now, they were fighting a war on two fronts. Two days later, news from human territory arrived. Empty Mountain and Water Sheen had agreed to mobilize their armies and were preparing to attack. They even officially condemned the Harpies for their actions. Unsurprisingly, Zixian Yao had been used as an excuse for the humans to attack. All of the parties involved in this scheme were all extremely excited Dash. As long as Eternal Knight's brain was normal, he would most likely let Zixian Yao go. Unexpectedly, however, Eternal Knight remained motionless. Another three days passed. Within Maya's room, Su Chen sat alone in the courtyard. How are things over at Leo Country? Su Chen asked as he stood in front of a flower seemingly speaking to himself. A spectre-like voice replied, it will take time before the armies can fully mobilize, but the soldiers are already making preparations. It was Putluk's voice. Putluk had already entered Harpy territory, but not the Origin Light Castle. From his position, he was capable of communicating with Zhu Chen Huan, Zhu Xian Yao, and Su Chen at the same time. But yet he still chose to maintain his position, Su Chen muttered. He had a bad feeling that the situation was no longer under his control. His plan had been a good one. But the tragic reality was that not every good plan would result in a good outcome. In a battle between geniuses, it was not a rarity that both sides would be able to see through each other's moves beforehand and take steps to prevent their plan from coming to fruition. It was for this reason that Su Chen had been able to accomplish what he had accomplished in Ravager territory. It wasn't just because Su Chen was smart, but also because of Anubai's impotence. This time, however, Su Chen knew that he had encountered a powerful opponent. Eternal Knight's reactions were impossible to fully predict. He didn't know what Eternal Knight was thinking or what he was doing. This worried him. After a moment's thought, Su Chen said, Keep a close eye on what's happening over at Zixian Yao's place of residence. I have a bad feeling about this. Got it. Putluk replied. Even though Su Chen had taken so many protective measures, he eventually discovered that all of them appeared to have been meaningless. Two days later, Su Chen heard back. Zuxian Yao had been brought into Sky City. Under the identity of a criminal, Su Chen was about to go insane. Or was Eternal Knight the one going insane? How could he do that? How could he ignore the impending pressure from the humans and beasts and insist on dealing with him and Zuxian Yao? At that moment, Su Chen finally got a taste of what it felt like to be on the other end of defeat. Unfortunately, the Origin Bone Scepter wouldn't give him any predictions about Eternal Knight's actions. Eternal Knight was too powerful, and he was constantly surrounded by a revolving cast of experts. As such, it was impossible for Su Chen to determine what Eternal Knight was thinking. Su Chen, what do we do now? Even Pitluk was beginning to grow anxious about the situation. Zhu Chen Huan also doesn't know about the situation yet. I haven't told him. Zhu Chen paced back and forth a few times. You're right not to tell him yet. It appears that Eternal Knight is determined to have a go at it. I'm putting pressure on him by using two massive armies, 
while he is using Zuxi on Yao to force my hand. Him sending her to Sky City this is definitely aimed at me. Putluck agreed. This move from Eternal Knight is vicious. He's intent on pressuring this weak spot of yours. Su Chen harumphed. He might have grasped my weak spot. But what about him? Does he have no weak spot? But look was taken aback. What is his weak spot exactly? His subjects. Su Chen said with a bone chilling intent. Eternal Knight, you really are ruthless to ignore the pressure of two armies bearing down on you just so you can play a game of chicken with me. But not every harpy will be as vicious as you. The next day. A rumor began to spread through Sky City. The content of the rumor was that Eternal Knight had fallen for a human woman and forcibly seized her. However, because she was heiress to a demonic emperor clan, the humans were preparing to attack. Since Eternal Knight had turned down their requests to negotiate multiple times, the beasts were also invading, so the two enemy forces were attacking right when the harpies were weakest. However, Eternal Knight remained smitten with lust and ignored the plight of his country, forcibly bringing this woman to Sky City. This was going to cause war to break out between the humans and the harpies. Apart from the fact that Eternal Knight fancied Zixian Yao, most of this information was true. This was the most effective kind of rumor, 90% true and 10% false designed to completely change the narrative. Any harpy who found out would think that Eternal Knight was the one who was responsible for the impending disaster. Yes, even the invasion of the beasts would become Eternal Knight's responsibility. At the very beginning, most of the harpies didn't dare believe their ears. Eternal Knight had been a king for thousands of years and his subjects worshipped him for his wisdom. No one believed that he was capable of doing something like this. However, those who were interested in doing a little more research quickly discovered that there is likely something to those rumors. There was indeed a human diplomatic envoy that had been arrested in the Origin Light Castle. The humans were preparing a massive invading force, the beasts were in fact encroaching on the borders of Harpy territory, and their leader was ignoring the beast invasion, instead sending three floating points off to deal with the humans. These discoveries all supported the veracity of the rumors. The thought of another vicious battle loomed over the harpies. None of the harpies wanted to repeat what they had experienced at the hands of the beasts. Not to mention that this conflict would probably be twice as intense. Even though starting a war over a woman sounded romantic, it was actually an idiotic pointless idea. There was no way the harpies would be willing to accept this kind of idiocy. There were even a few officials and nobles who didn't know the full story that found it unacceptable. The rumor began to spread with more and more momentum through Sky City, and news of Zixian Yao's arrival spread. Within three short days, the citizens of Sky City had begun to clamor for Zixian Yao's release. This fervor reached a climax at the moment Zixian Yao entered the city. When they saw the beautiful, elegant Zixian Yao imprisoned, the countless individuals watching were even more stirred up. Set her free, set her free, set her free. The crowd of harpies clamored and yelled. This was the first time they had ever been the side of a human. The harpies didn't want a war. At least, they didn't want to go to war for such a reason, because of the dual authority of the religious and political branches of Harpy government, the Harpy civilians actually had quite a bit of authority over the government's actions, which was manifested through the Mother Goddess sect. Within the Perpetual Daylight Palace, Serene Dream Lotus Crown strode forwards rapidly. Eternal Night. What are you doing? Why are you so stubborn? Is capturing Zixian Yao the only way? Do you not know that news has already spread throughout the entire city that you are dragging the harpies into a disaster all for a woman? She began to tremble in anger as she spoke. She wasn't angry merely because of Eternal Knight's decision. It was because his affections had been placed on a human female. Eternal Knight's expression remained as stoic as ever. This old harpies will was ironclad, as immovable as a mountain. He could only say indifferently. Have you ever wondered why the rumors would have started in the first place? Serene Dream Lotus Crown was taken aback. What? Eternal Knight didn't wait for her to reply and answered her own question. The rumors have caused our own countrymen to turn on us. Our opponent must have his back against the wall. Serene Dream Lotus Crown said, You mean, such a violent response has never occurred before. All that means is that we have found the right person. Zuxian Yao is absolutely linked to this fake Halcyon wing streak. So what? 
Serene Dream Lotus Crown shook her head. Right now, Halcyon Wing Streak is not the most important, but the battle between us two races. Halcyon Wing Streak is only one person. The amount of damage he can cause is not enough to completely destroy our race. As for the invasion of the other two races, he can't cause enough damage to destroy our race. Who do you think is responsible for our current situation? Eternal Knight countered. Serene Dream Lotus Crown froze, but women sometimes had the inherent ability to ignore logic. A moment later, she shook her head and said, I don't care. The most important item of business right now is to extinguish the flames of war that are brewing. Do you know how many civilians are beseeching me right now? They have just gone through a tough battle, and many harpies have lost family and loved ones. You cannot insist on forcing them into battle again, especially one on two fronts. When Eternal Knight heard Serene Dream Lotus Crown utter the words I don't care, he knew that there was no point in continuing to discuss things any longer. He sighed. Dream Lotus, it's a good thing to place importance on the cries of the civilians, but don't be wishy-washy as a result. A talented leader knows how to take the opinions of the masses into consideration but doesn't batter them. No matter what they think, you need to have your own opinions and thoughts on the situation even though I don't think it would make much of a difference if you did. Serene Dream Lotus Crown was infuriated. Are you looking down on me? Eternal Night fell silent gazing intently at her. Serene Dream Lotus Crown felt her face flush. I know that sometimes I don't reflect enough, but I represent the will of the common harpies. They, like us, are all subjects of the Mother Goddess, and as such we have the duty to hear their voice. And my responsibility is to keep you in check and make sure that you don't ruin our country because of your own interests. Eternal Knight replied calmly, what we really need to pay attention to is to meeting the needs of the harpies, not what they want. This way, you can't push responsibility onto them when the situation gets out of control. Their intelligence is limited, and they cannot possibly see the full picture that we can see. The only thing I am saying is that my primary goal right now is to calm the conflict. Calm the conflict? How? Eternal Knight replied, tomorrow afternoon. Zuxian Yao will be executed on the palace's fairgrounds. Book 5, Chapter 173, Uncompromising. This chapter is updated by novels.pl. News that Zuxian Yao was to be killed very quickly spread throughout Sky City. When Su Chen heard this news, his expression was neither shocked nor angry. Even though it wasn't like he had known a long time ago, Su Chen realized that he had accepted this possibility a long time ago. This sensation was totally illogical, and it also ignored Su Chen's emotions. Su Chen didn't tell Pitluk. He didn't want the others to be anxious. He sat in the courtyard, all alone, turning over something in his mind. Time flew by, and the sky gradually began to grow light. The execution was slated to take place at noon. As noon drew closer and closer, the fairgrounds of the Perpetual Daylight Palace also began to fill up with harpies wanting to watch the spectacle unfold. Because harpies could fly, they were perfect spectators. The small fairgrounds was quickly filled with tens of thousands of harpies. Standing below the stage were Zuxian Ya and her subordinates, a total of 125 people. Zuxian Yao's expression was stoic. It wasn't because she was afraid of death but that she believed in Su Chen. In comparison, the Zhu clan's subordinates were in much worse shape. They were all pale with fright, and some of them couldn't control the tears and snot flowing down their face. The executioner was standing in place, holding a soul-severing blade in his hand. The surface of the blade was covered in a unique medicine that could completely destroy any consciousness power it came in contact with, so that any target slain by it, even an ultimate Emperor Elm cultivator, would not be able to be resurrected. Further away, a large group of harpy officials stood off to the side, watching closely. However, they didn't seem to have any heart to supervise the situation. They all appeared to be whispering into each other's ears. From time to time, an official would run into the palace before exiting with a gloomy expression on their face. The harpies watching had no idea what those officials were doing, but they cried out. Your Majesty, please, spare her. You cannot kill Zixian Yao, otherwise a battle will break out and our race will be exterminated. An old harpy flew into the palace, 
heading straight for the main hall. Everyone realized that the officials were also doing their best to try and stop the situation from unfolding. The old individual who had just charged into the palace was a high-ranking harpy official with outstanding character. No one had expected even him to step in and try and stop Eternal Knight. Unfortunately, his pleas were also ineffective. Very quickly, the old harpy was unceremoniously thrown out of the hall by a soldier as he cried out with incredibly piercing words such as don't let your emotions affect your decisions and drag the harpy civilians into another bloodbath. These cries didn't move Eternal Knight, but they did move the harpy civilians standing nearby. There were even some who were trying to convince those around them to storm the fairgrounds and stop the execution. Unfortunately, the crowd was not spurred into action. A large group of elite soldiers charged over, aiming their weapons at the civilians. One of the civilians trying to stir up trouble suddenly found that an arrow had penetrated his wing, causing him to plummet from the sky. Some soldiers immediately flew out and arrested him. Next, a voice filled the surroundings. His Majesty has issued an order, unless by his express permission. Anyone who attempts to stop the execution will be treated as a traitor and will be immediately executed. The speaker was Lonely Skyleap. This harpy commander's reputation had surged after leading the harpies in a successful defense against the desolate beast, causing many of the civilians to respect him immensely. For Eternal Knight to use him to proclaim this matter was like using a butcher's knife to kill a chicken but that was also a clear demonstration of Eternal Knight's decisiveness. The Harpies were originally scattered and unorganized anyways, so when faced with the imposing declaration of a god of war, the unrest began to settle. The flames that Su Chen had only just lit were immediately extinguished, and the crowd no longer had any temper with which to fight back. Even Su Chen, who was mingled amongst that crowd of Harpies, could only smile helplessly and bitterly. Eternal Knight, Eternal Knight, you really have some skills, but will you really kill her? Su Chen knew that Eternal Knight's goal was to force him out, but he didn't know whether Eternal Knight was really planning on killing Zuxian Yao if he didn't show himself. Only when the execution took place would Su Chen know. Worth noting was that Su Chen was remaining hidden not because he was cowardly but because he didn't want people to link him with Zuxian Yao. That would make it impossible for him to save her. For this reason, he could only wait. The best outcome here was that Eternal Knight was only trying to scare him. If Su Chen hadn't revealed himself at noon, perhaps Eternal Knight would stop the execution. This was a battle of willpower and faith who would be able to hold on until the last moment. If this was before, Su Chen would have complete confidence that he could have won. Now, however, he was no longer so confident. Eternal Knight was the most fearsome opponent he had ever encountered before, not because he was strong or because he held immense power, but because he was incredibly wise and slippery. And now, Su Chen could only wait. Wait until all the cards were on the table. Time inched by second by second. The time of the execution came closer and closer. The harpies watching on completely ignored the harsh glare of the sun. They continued to watch on anxiously, hoping that his majesty would change his mind. However, their hopes were disappointed. No one could oppose eternal night. His determination and his will were all unaffected by those around him. Even the mother goddess sect, which was on par with him in terms of authority, was completely powerless. For tens of thousands of years, the Mother Goddess sect had been responsible for keeping the Emperor in line to protect the civilians. If necessary, they even had the power to overthrow the Emperor himself. Even so, Eternal Knight continued to forge onwards. His decisiveness and determination were truly praiseworthy. When the sun was directly above in the sky, the critical moment arrived. Bang! With this tolling bell, the executioner yelled loudly, the time is now. Prepare the execution. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. The hundred and twenty-five subordinates were pushed down as the executioners raised their soul-severing blades. The harpies felt their hearts catch in their throats. Would there be any unexpected occurrences? Would the execution be put on hold? Would someone interfere? The harpy civilians all watched with earnest expectation. However, the answers they received was a great disappointment. Not at all. When the execution issued the command, everyone felt their breath catch. As the executioners raised their soul-severing balds, Eternal Knight had no intentions of compromising. If you don't come out, 
I'm going to kill them all. The day before, within the perpetual daylight palace, Serene Dream Lotus Crown was stunned when she heard Eternal Knight's justification. So that's your decision? Is that why you are doing all of this? Do you know what might happen once those people die? Serene Dream Lotus Crown said with apprehension. Eternal Knight smiled slightly. It will be a humiliating mark in the books of history. A shame for you harpies. But you're still insisting on doing this? That is the responsibility I should bear. Eternal Knight replied. As the Emperor of the Harpies, it is my duty to bear the responsibility for any decision that I make. As long as the Harpies survive, what is a small blemish to my reputation? Even Serene Dream Lotus Crown was taken aback by Eternal Knight's words. She gazed at Eternal Knight as if she were gazing at a lover. Even though the other person was an old, grizzled man, he was extremely handsome and youthful in Serene Dream Lotus Crown's eyes. She couldn't help but reach out her hand and stroke Eternal Knight's face. She said, Eternal Knight. Do you remember what you said that time when we were reading together? Eternal Knight nodded. Of course, I said that. As a man, my ambitions and aspirations much stretch as far as the heavens. I will do what my predecessors could not do and bear what they could not bear. You have done that, Serene Dream Lotus Crown as she leaned into him, unable to control herself. She wanted to hold Eternal Knight, but he refused her advances. He shook her head at her. Serene Dream Lotus Crown suddenly remembered her status. The Harpies had a rule that the leader of the Mother Goddess sect and the Emperor could never be together. This was to ensure the independence of the two branches of political authority. Serene Dream Lotus Crown and Eternal Knight had once lived like that. At that time, she was a genius talent rising through the ranks of the Mother Goddess sect while Eternal Knight was only a common harpy official. Their relationship was extremely good. Even so, once Eternal Knight seized control of the harpies for himself, his relationship with Serene Dream Lotus Crown was doomed. These past few years, Serene Dream Lotus Crown had felt incredibly bitter that Eternal Knight had forsaken her for the sake of greater power, but all of that bitterness faded at this moment, because she understood Eternal Knight's heart and the burden he bore. It was not easy on him, she said gently, then let them come. When the battle draws near, I will bear the burden with you. Let them come. This was Serene Dream Lotus Crown's decision. Since Eternal Knight had decided to fight, Serene Dream Lotus Crown was willing to fight by his side. No matter what, they would need to endure. The blades glowed with a chilly light that emanated in all directions carrying with them an aura of death and relentless determination. It was apparent that death was imminent. At that moment, a gust of wind blew by, as if time had frozen. The 125 soul-severing blades hung motionlessly in the air. One of the blades was merely three centimeters from Zixian Yao's neck. This had happened because the space around the blades had suddenly frozen, as if the air had suddenly congealed into fat. Not only so, but a formless pressure suddenly began to emanate, forcing the blades upwards. Because the executioners had used too much force, the collision of the two opposing forces caused the blades to tremble violently. The simultaneous trembling of 125 blades at the same time resulted in a strange hump filling the air. All of the harpies were stunned when they saw this. They watched as a harpy stepped out from the throng of spectators. Even though he had wings, they were furled. He stood in the air not relying on his wings to remain suspended in the air. Not only so, but his aura grew stronger and stronger, as if he had taken off a costume of weakness. That harpy had transformed into a human. The crowd burst out into an uproar. Su Chen. When Zixian Yao saw him appear on the scene, she couldn't stop herself from crying out. Even though she believed that Su Chen wouldn't ignore her, her heart still ached when she saw Su Chen actually appear. How could you be this silly? Wasn't he the one who said that no one could save her if the relationship between her and Su Chen were to come to light? Since I am going to die, what is the point in you coming to the grave with me? In that moment, Zuxian Yao began to weep, both with happiness and despair. Lonely Sky Leap, however, smiled. You showed up after all, and with your main body, too. How bold. It doesn't matter anymore, Su Chen replied. If he has issued the order to kill Zuxian Yao, then that means he doesn't want to kill me yet. Am I right? What did that mean? All of the onlookers couldn't understand. Lonely Skyleap was stunned before he said, 
His Majesty was correct, you are in fact the most difficult opponent he has ever encountered before, Master Su. Su Chen smiled slightly. What a coincidence. I was just thinking that myself, the Harpies have quite a competent ruler at the helm. Book 5, Chapter 174 Responsibility. This chapter is updated by novels.pl. Within Perpetual Daylight Palace's Heart Inquiring Pavilion, this was where Eternal Night thought in silence. Under normal circumstances, this was not a place where he handled political matters, so no guests were typically allowed to be present. Today, however, an outsider had appeared. A true outside, the human. Su Chen. Eternal Knight and Su Chen had finally met, right inside Eternal Knight's heart inquiring pavilion. For this reason, only Su Chen and Eternal Knight were present here. Even Serene Dream Lotus Crown wasn't present. Serene Dream Lotus Crown had indicated her displeasure, but Eternal Knight had refuted her immediately. He said, You are not good at negotiating. Even though she didn't like his evaluation of her. Serene Dream Lotus Crown had to admit that he had a point. Eternal Knight was eventually able to keep Serene Dream Lotus Crown out of the room as well, due to his influence as the Emperor of the Kingdom. Unlike what most people might have expected, however, Su Chen was not displaying an attitude of open hostility. He stood in front of a bookshelf and flipped through one of the books as he said, I have experienced many things in this life of mine, and I have encountered many opponents. Some were weak and some were strong, but I have never feared them. Even though they were strong, they were only strong in body and not in mind. The intelligent races are named precisely because we are known for our intellect, not our strength. I have never once lost to anyone in my lifetime, but now I realize that there is always someone smarter than you out there. He put down the book, then turned to face Eternal Knight and said, I have heard of your great name before but only after we have exchanged blows did I realize that this reputation is not fake. Eternal Knight's expression remained unchanged. Obviously, he was not affected by Su Chen's praises. He only said faintly, it wasn't easy to invite you to come out into the open. You're right, it wasn't easy. But you were still able to do it. I admire your decisiveness. Actually, I should have guessed that, if your prison warden was able to discover the truth. How could it have escaped your notice? The only difference was that you found out slightly later. You destroyed the evidence collected by the sky-catching prison. Halcyon Wing Streak and Su Chen being the same person was merely a guess of mine, Eternal Knight replied. Can you tell me how you managed to guess? Su Chen asked. Eternal Knight replied, Zuxian Yao's subordinate. Indeed, even though, after killing Divine Feather Weave, Su Chen had purposefully headed for the sky-catching prison to destroy the records there. He could not prevent new information from reaching the Eats of Eternal Night. That information came from Zuxian Yao's subordinates. Zuxian Yao's subordinates didn't know that Halcyon Wing Streak was Su Chen, but that didn't mean they didn't know about Su Chen's relationship with the Zu clan. After all, Accounts of Su Chen's actions in Flat Sky City when he was dealing with the wrong clan had spread far and wide. The first thing that Eternal Knight did after capturing Zixian Yao was to try and find a way to get information about people who were close to the Zu clan. Given their tactics, it was only natural that the Harpies were able to glean something from so many mouths. This was how Su Chen entered the periphery of Eternal Knight's vision. The young worldly sage, full of intelligence and incredibly powerful, most importantly, records of what he had accomplished in Ravager territory preceded him. His exploitation of the Ravagers was not a secret, his illusion techniques, his relations with the Zuclan, and his sudden disappearance during this time all allowed Eternal Knight to link him and Halcyon Wing Streak. Su Chen didn't appear to mind when he found out. All he said was, Emperor's brilliance and wisdom is worthy of praise. I feel extremely apologetic about what I have done to the Harpies. Now that I am here, my punishment is entirely up to you to decide. Eternal Knight remained silent. He waved his hand and pointed at the table in front of him. Su Chen put down the book and sat. He sat facing Eternal Knight, appearing completely without fear. After some time, Eternal Knight said, To be honest, 
I really want to kill you right here and right now. The harpies have lost hundreds of lives because if you, this grudge is one that cannot be wiped clean between me and you. Su Chen chuckled. The number of humans and harpies that have been killed in the past tens of millennia number not in the hundreds of thousands but in the hundred of billions. Two hundred thousand is as significant as a single hair. As a human, it is my responsibility to eradicate any threats to my race and destroy their enemies. Even if my hands become drenched in blood, I have no regrets. Eternal Night's aura suddenly surged, and a wave of intense pressure enveloped the surroundings. Not a single bit leaked out of the room, clearly demonstrating his precise control over his strength. Su Chen, however, continued to stare at Eternal Night levelly as the current representative of the human race. He refused to shrink back in the face of this harpy emperor. The aura gradually dispersed. Eternal Knight sighed, I'm getting old. The younger generation is always more daring and willing to take responsibility. I cannot claim to be equal with Emperor when it comes to taking responsibility. If there is any person on this continent worthy of my respect, or even to concede defeat to, it is you. Su Chen replied sincerely, Oh, you know that I want to discuss something with you? Eternal Knight asked, Isn't that why you are so insistent on meeting me? Su Chen countered. Eternal Knight nodded with a slight smile. That's correct. It's better for the doer to undo what they have done. There was no need for either side to say any more. Everything went unsaid. Why was Eternal Knight so insistent on killing Zuxian Yao regardless of whether or not Su Chen actually appeared? because Eternal Knight had managed to see one thing clearly, even if he released Zuxian Yao, he would not be able to stop the conflict from occurring. Yes, he could not stop it from occurring. Starting a war was quite easy, but defusing one was not. The three human kingdoms had allied together under the pretext of Zuxian Yao being unfairly captured. But the actual reason was because the harpies were currently in a weakened state. Would the humans pull back their troops just because Zuxian Yao was released? What a joke. Zuxian Yao was just an excuse. If a bandit wanted to rob you, they might find an excuse, such as this mountain belongs to me. But if you were to prove to the bandit that the mountain was his, would he give up on trying to rob you? Of course not. Throughout the course of human history, there had been plenty of examples of a large country invading a small country under the pretext of discovering the presence of illegal weapons there. After that country was conquered, it was then discovered that there were actually no such illegal weapons found there. In other words, the reason for mobilizing troops in the first place was not actually a valid one. What happened then? Well, it didn't matter because they won. The leader of the large country could just declare that the other country was committing wicked acts and needed to be eliminated. See, it really was that easy. Excuses were only meant to save face. What? You won't give me face? Doesn't matter to me. If you wanted to do it badly enough, you would find a way to do it with or without an excuse. Zuxian Yao was merely an excuse. Releasing her would never stop the human invasion. That was even more useless against the beasts. What did Zuxian Yao have anything to do with them? As such, Zuxian Yao also couldn't stop the battle. Both Eternal Knight and Su Chen were clear about this. Even Zuxian Yao knew which was why she had said as much to Iron Cliff. Iron Cliff's response was that Su Chen had no intention of calling off the conflict anyways. He tossed out the fishing basket with no intention of repairing it later. But Eternal Knight was going to force him to repair it. Su Chen hadn't anticipated this. He hadn't expected Eternal Knight to be so ruthless, incredibly ruthless, just because Eternal Knight had seen through. It was impossible for anyone to not think wishfully, when faced with such powerful pressure, and the enemy saying that they would stop the conflict as long as the hostage was released, most people would become much more amenable to persuasion. After all, a hostage was just a hostage. They had no particular intrinsic value, and nothing would be lost if they were released. On the other hand, if the other party went back on their word and continued to move in by force, that would affect their reputation somewhat. What if the enemy was also aware of this and would call off the battle as a result? That was a possibility, after all. This ray of hope was more than enough to force roughly 70% of rulers to acquiesce. Even if their enemies still insisted on attacking, they would at least be able to explain things to their citizens. See, it wasn't me forcibly seizing the hostage that resulted in this situation. 
Our enemies are just greedy and were using this as an excuse. The battle is not my fault. The ability to explain the situation to their subjects would cause a remaining 29% to acquiesce. However, there were always a few people who could endure pressure from both without and within, maintaining their ability to choose. Eternal Knight belonged to this 1%. He clearly saw that only by not releasing the hostage would he have even the slightest chance of avoiding battle. That chance came in the form of Su Chen. Su Chen was the one who had incited this conflict in the first place. He was also the most likely to be able to quell it as well. So how would he get Su Chen to defuse the conflict? Zuxian Yao. She was the only bargaining chip. For this reason, Eternal Knight had been intent on killing Zuxian Yao from the beginning. He was really going to kill her. The reason for this was very simple. If he was only intending on pretending to kill her, it was very likely that Su Chen would be able to see through his plot. Only by truly intending to kill Zuxian Yao would he be able to force Su Chen out into the open. What if Zuxian Yao died and Su Chen never showed himself? Hadn't this already been discussed? the human race would attack regardless of whether Zixian Yao was killed or not. If that was the case, it was better just to kill her. As long as Su Chen didn't appear, there was only one distinction between the two choices. If Eternal Knight let Zixian Yao go, he would have been able to avoid taking responsibility for the impending battle, but he would also have lost the chance at stopping the battle from unfolding and meeting Su Chen. If he killed Zixian Yao, Eternal Knight would have become a criminal in the eyes of the Harpies, because they would believe he was responsible for this disastrous battle. This would become a humiliating stain on his legacy in the books of history. Most rulers would have chosen the former in order to preserve their reputation. However, Eternal Knight had chosen the latter. He was willing to take this chance to force out Su Chen and resolve the conflict. This was taking responsibility. No matter how the Harpy civilians viewed him, no matter how his reputation would be tarnished, Eternal Knight forever only cared for the future of the Harpies. In that sense, Eternal Knight's boldness surpassed Su Chen's. Even though Su Chen had quite a bit of force skill, robbing places and assassinating high-profile targets was not something that a royal leader would do. Of course, Su Chen was not an emperor. He was a sage, the human's worldly sage. This limitation was unfortunate for him but it turned out to be the good fortune of the human race. As such, Su Chen and Eternal Knight could both be considered great persons in their respective situations. And Eternal Knight's gamble had paid off. He had managed to force Su Chen out into the open. Now, it was time for Su Chen to sell out, for the sake of Zixian Yao's life. Book 5, Chapter 175 three conditions. This chapter is updated by novels.pl. After a long period of facing off, Su Chen sighed. Why do you think I have the ability to stop the battle? Eternal Knight replied, I don't know how you will do it, because that is your problem. All I know is that there is only one person who has ever pushed me to this degree, and that's you. You have so far accomplished miracle after miracle, first with the Ravagers and now with the Harpies, by relying on your transformation technique spatial abilities, and predictive capabilities, all while remaining free to act as you please and wreak devastation on both of us. Since you have been able to do all of these things, calming a battle is but a trivial matter. And what if I can't do it? Zuxian Ya will die, Eternal Knight said faintly. I don't care about offending the Harpies right now. If you cannot stop the war that is brewing between us, I will kill her. In any case, the number of deaths won't be changed much by adding one more to the tally. His words were filled with ruthlessness, clearly demonstrating what kind of character he had. Now, it was Su Chen's turn to feel a headache coming on. He rubbed his temples and said, Your Majesty, when did you become so unreasonable? The fact that I haven't given you a violent beating before sending you back to deal with the battle, given what you have done to the harpies, is already me showing great restraint. Su Chen could only helplessly say, fine, tell me your conditions. Eternal Knight raised three fingers, first of all, you need to stop the conflict that is brewing with both the beasts and the humans. When Su Chen heard this, he frowned. It wasn't because this request was too excessive, but because it was only one request of three that Eternal Knight was going to make. However, Su Chen still said in the end, I agree. Secondly, 
you must create a cultivation method for the harpies as well. Su Chen was stunned. Eternal Knight said, you are the worldly sage, responsible for creating the bloodline less cultivation techniques. If you can do it for the humans, you can also do it for the harpies. We are inherently physically weak and have been trying to resolve this problem for years. However, we have always lacked a good close quarters combat system. If there's anyone who can solve this problem, it's you. After all, you helped those Ravager guys figure out a cultivation system, didn't you? So you know about that too. Su Chen frowned, but in the end he still nodded, I can do that as well. The third request is probably for me to return all the treasures that I stole to you, right? I can agree to that as well. As he spoke, he pulled out a trunk. The trunk was filled with origin rings. These were all the treasures that Su Chen had gathered during his two years in Harpy territory. Unfortunately, it appeared that he was going to have to return all of these treasures. Unexpectedly, Eternal Knight didn't even spare the trunk a single glance. He said, you don't need to return these things to me. What? Su Chen was stunned. Eternal Knight said calmly, anything you were able to take away belongs to you. I'm not that greedy. Su Chen chuckled, old man, there's no need to say these things. Right? This trunk not only contains all of the treasures I took from Fate's hands and Jade Clear Mist's treasure stores, even the Mother Goddess sect's treasures are in here, especially those divine origin tools. Eternal Knight interrupted him. The Mother Goddess sect's treasures aren't mine. Why should I care? Hey! Su Chen stared at Eternal Knight in a daze. Eternal Knight said, you don't need to pretend to be an idiot. I never planned on keeping this from you in the first place. The Mother Goddess sect merely represents divine authority and controls the souls of the masses. But that is true whether they succeed or fail. The Mother Goddess sect is too above worldly matters. They wield incredible authority, but they don't know how to use it because they don't know how to be political. Throughout the past tens of thousands of years, the Mother Goddess sect has always been dragging the country back dragging me back. There are many things I wanted to do that were impossible simply because they refused to let me, Su Chen said. But what I do know is that the Mother Goddess sect and Sky Country are irreversibly tied together at this point. Eternal Knight nodded, I will not refute that truth, but that is only because of Serene Dream's trust in me. But I am getting old, and one day I will die. Who knows what will happen then? The Mother Goddess sect's influence might not necessarily be a good thing for the country. It's probably a good thing for those treasures to remain lost. If they lose some strength, it will give them less overall authority. The Mother Goddess sect has a good reason for existing, and it is necessary for them to stick around. But they cannot be too strong. Weakening them a little is a good thing. Su Chen finally understood what he was saying. Unfortunately, while Serene Dream Lotus Crown was infatuated with Eternal Night, Eternal Night was constantly scheming, even bringing the Mother Goddess sect into the mix. There was no way that Eternal Night would be able to appropriate those treasures for himself, so it was better just to let them go. Of course, this didn't mean that Eternal Night was just going to give them to Su Chen for free. It was obvious that these treasures would be given to him because of the third requirement. Su Chen could instinctively sense that this third condition was going to be the most important. Indeed, Eternal Night said, I need you to bring me two items. As long as you are able to do this, I will immediately release Zuxian Yao, and everything you have reaped in Harpy territory will belong to you. If you want. I can even open up the imperial storehouses and let you take away any treasure that you want. Su Chen wasn't happy in the slightest when he heard this. You don't need to entice me like that. If you're willing to pay that higher price, the two items you are going to request will be incredibly hard to obtain. Tell me what you want. The immortal soul and Neptune's eye. Puh. Su Chen spat out the tea he had just been drinking. He stared at Eternal Knight. You, when he was able to confirm that Eternal Knight wasn't kidding, Su Chen said, you'd better prepare to kill me and her together then. The immortal soul and the Neptune's eye came from a piece of Sky City's history that the Harpies preferred not to look back on. The deep sea anchor plan. The plan would give Sky City access to an immense amount of energy, but the interference of the Harpies' enemies forever locked Sky City in place, making it impossible for the city to move. The main offender of this was the deep sea anchor itself, 
which extended into the unknown and firmly rooted Sky City in place. One end of the deep sea anchor was placed on the Sox nucleus controlling the city, while the other end was placed in the depths of the origin energy sea. Even though it sounded quite simple, the plan was incredibly complex in reality. The anchor itself was an incredible feat of engineering and it had been designed with a number of different functionalities in mind. It absolutely had many more functions than to merely transmit energy at a more efficient rate. Naturally, there needed to be a control mechanism for this kind of a complex piece of equipment. This control hub was actually Neptune's eye. Neptune's eye was a large crystal ball made with precious materials and filled with complicated origin formation inscriptions, allowing it to resonate completely with the deep sea anchor because this resonant functionality was installed when the deep sea anchor was being created, it was impossible to construct a second Neptune's eye for the same anchor. However, Neptune's eye had been stolen after the anchor was successfully completed. The ones to take it away were the various intelligent races that had been harmed by the harpies. The immortal soul had also been stolen. The immortal soul was a special kind of consciousness that was designed to attach itself to the deep sea anchor to become the anchor's tool spirit. Of course, this compatibility was extremely rare so it was impossible to find a substitute. The immortal souls will would increase the maneuverability of the deep sea anchor. If Neptune's eye was like the deep sea anchor's brain, responsible for controlling it, then immortal soul was like the anchor's limbs, responsible for moving it. The deep sea anchor had basically entered a vegetative state after having its brain and limbs removed. Later on, it was discovered that these two treasures had been dispersed to the Oceanids and to the Asterals becoming their treasure. This was also the reason that they came to be known as Neptune's eye and mortal soul. For eternal night to request these things from Su Chen meant only one thing, he wanted to allow Sky City to regain its mobility. Sky City, the powerful, invincible Sky City that even a desolate beast could not defeat. Eternal Knight actually wanted to give Sky City the ability to move around again. What were the Mother Goddess sect's treasures worth when compared to such a grand plan? That was why Su Chen said, then you might as well kill me. These two items were incredible treasures of the two races. How could he allow Eternal Knight to have them? Unexpectedly, Eternal Knight nodded when he heard this. Fine, that's what I was thinking as well. What? Su Chen was taken aback. What I'm saying is that I really want to kill you, Eternal Knight replied. If you don't agree to my conditions, then I will just kill you here and now. That is not a bad decision, Su Chen frowned. I don't understand. Didn't you need my help to defuse the situation earlier? Why are you saying this now? Eternal Knight replied, that was before I saw you. But now, I suddenly feel that killing you is the best decision based on the fact that you were the one to start this war, caused the deaths of hundreds of thousands of harpies, and, hey now, was this kind of hatred necessary? After a moment's thought, Su Chen asked, what is it that suddenly caused this change of heart? Eternal Knight replied, the fact that you are now at the spirit burning realm. Spirit burning realm. So Eternal Knight had managed to figure it out anyways, Su Chen had carefully kept his cultivation realm a secret but it appeared that Eternal Knight had managed to discover that something wasn't right. Su Chen felt his heart tremble. Your Majesty, you must be joking. So what if I've reached the spirit burning realm? That's not really a big deal, is it? How is it not a big deal? You've reached the spirit burning realm without a bloodline? Eternal Knight replied calmly. How many humans have yearned for this to happen without anything coming to fruition? Yet you were able to do it. There were humans who were able to reach the blood boiling realm before. But then you opened the way to the yang opening realm, then the light shaking realm, and now the spirit burning realm. In but a few decades, you have accomplished what others could not in tens of millennia. Is that not a big deal? Su Chen remained silent. Eternal Knight continued, because of you? Humans will definitely escape from the control of bloodlines. Why are the three countries so confident that they can take us on? Because your cultivation techniques have been spread far and wide, and the origin Chi scholars have begun to appear in waves amongst the human race, especially ones at the blood boiling realm or yang opening realm. Those people serve as the backbone of the human army and now they are virtually ubiquitous. Even the status of light-shaking realm cultivators is rapidly declining, 
even though you haven't universally distributed it yet. But you will sooner or later, right? Su Chen fell silent. Eternal Knight nodded. Many people think that the light shaking realm is your upper limit, and that the spirit burning realm is impossible. But I can tell that you are far from your limit. You are still young but you have already broken into the spirit burning realm. Who knows if you will be able to make it into the last two realms. What will happen to the strength of the human race? I can't help but tremble even thinking about it. Tell me, why shouldn't I nip the problem in the bud and kill you right now? Su Chen sighed helplessly, if you put it that way, then I think your best bet is just to cut me down where I stand. You aren't afraid of being labeled a villain anyways. It would be quite impressive for you to make such a sacrifice for the sake of the intelligent races. This is the exact reason why I have not allowed myself to kill you until now. I am not willing to be sacrificed for the sake of the intelligent races, Eternal Knight replied. Why do the harpies need to pay the price for the sake of containing the human race's rise to power? Book 5, Chapter 176, Open. This chapter is updated by Novels.pl. Why me? This was a very interesting attitude. This had happened throughout history many times before. For example, say that an enemy force had invaded deep into a country's territory and was knocking on the capital's front door. If the emperor asks the rich merchants and nobles to use their resources and manpower to defend the capital at all costs, then despite the dire predicament, the response would usually be lackluster. Was it that these nobles were blind and couldn't understand the consequences of a successful enemy invasion? Of course not. There were many other factors at play. For example, just because the country was going to fall didn't mean that their clan necessarily would. It was possible that they could survive by paying a relatively small fee to the invaders. Others might think that they wouldn't be of much help and that the country would surely be able to withstand the invasion on its own. And yet another very important reason was, why me? Why should I pay 10,000 when the Ji clan is only paying 3,000? Why are they not doing anything? but I am required to make a sacrifice. I can provide assistance, but only if they do as well. So what if we're doomed? Then we'll all just be doomed together. I don't get along with the other clans, and I won't accept them giving any less than me. If we are going to die, then we'll all die together. This kind of thought process was an inherent part of the human psychology. Eternal Knight recognized the immense threat that Su Chen posed if he were to remain alive. But why should he pay the price for an act that would greatly benefit all of the other intelligent races? If the harpies were to be wiped out, then none of the other intelligent races should be allowed to survive either. Eternal Knight, in some sense, was also a normal person. Even he couldn't shed the psychological biases that came with being a harpy. However, Eternal Knight refused to give up hope. He didn't want to die and he didn't want the harpies to die either. So he had thought of an additional tactic. Increase the number of conditions. Su Chen, weren't you quite impressive? Aren't you very able? Fine then. Go and bring the immortal soul and Neptune's eye to me. With these two items in his hand, Sky City would be able to regain its mobility. If Sky City could move again, what use was the floating points plan? Just because I can't stop the humans from rising to power doesn't mean that I can't stop the harpies from also doing the same. When the humans grew strong, the harpies would be immune to their influence with this trump card. As for whether the other intelligent traces survived or not, it didn't matter to him in the slightest. In the future, it might even be the six intelligent traces against the two of them. That was a pretty good idea. This was the reason why Eternal Knight required such an unreasonable third demand of Su Chen. Su Chen was rendered speechless. Your Majesty, you're not treating me as a slave, you're treating me as a divine emissary. Su Chen said seriously. Eternal Knight smiled wryly as he replied, Gods exist on high and are not influenced by our desires, but you can be. You are not a god, but a human and a sage at that. It doesn't matter how sage-like I am. The harpies have probably thought of countless plans to take those items back, right? But which of those plans have ever succeeded? That's why I need you. Eternal Knight replied unhesitatingly. I trust that you will be able to do it. And what if I can't? Then we will all die together. Eternal Knight could be incredibly unreasonable when he wanted to. Su Chen laughed with anger. Fine. I don't even know how I'm going to stop the impending invasion, 
but you already trust me enough to resurrect the hope of the harpies, you really must have quite a high opinion of me. Eternal Knight seriously replied, it's not that I in particular have a high opinion of you, it's that no one can not have a high opinion of you after seeing your accomplishments. You managed to deal devastating blows to both the harpies and the ravagers, so why not continue and do the same to the Ocenids and the Astrals? Offending all of the major intelligent races is quite an achievement you know. Can I refuse this achievement? But when Su Chen saw Eternal Knight's expression, he knew that there was no room for negotiation. Ever since Eternal Knight had seen through Su Chen's cultivation realm, Su Chen only had one real choice that he could make. It seems that I must agree. Fine, Eternal Knight said with great satisfaction. Of course, I am willing to help Sir Su with anything he needs assistance with as long as it's within my ability to do so. Weren't you the one who agreed earlier to open up the Imperial Storehouse to me? This time, it was Eternal Knight's turn to be stunned speechless within Perpetual Daylight Palace's recuperation hall. That was where Zixian Yao was being kept. She had become much more resilient after her earlier near-death experience. At this moment, she was lying in Su Chen's embrace as she said, so you agreed to all his conditions? I didn't have a choice. He was the one who won out in this exchange, Su Chen replied with a sigh. Only now do I realize how lucky I was back in Ravager territory, as their ruler was an idiot. But Eternal Knight is a truly frightening opponent. I thought that, with my light shaking phantom technique and the origin bone scepter, I would have been able to do as I pleased. However, it turns out that I was wrong, Zuxian Yao Mikle said, it's all my fault for holding you back, if you keep saying that, I'll become unhappy, Su Chen said with a pampering tone, you are my woman, it's actually my fault for implicating you in all of this, how can this be your fault for holding me back, Eternal Knight is doing the same for his fellow countrymen, after all, Zuxian Yao smiled, I was being unreasonable, you're right, my husband. She was quite straightforward about the whole situation and very quickly stopped blaming herself. But still, Eternal Knight's request is not going to be easy to fulfill. It won't, so that's why we'll need to seize the moment. Even though he said that he would seize the moment, his gaze was fixed on Zuxian Yao as his eyes began to glow. Zuxian Yao understood his intentions. She blushed as she pushed him gently. You devil. Su Chen leaned in and the room was soon filled with the sounds of youthful springtime. At the same time, Eternal Knight was facing off against Serene Dream Lotus Crown. Why? Why didn't you force him to return the Divine Tool? Serene Dream Lotus Crown asked, infuriated. She was really mad this time. The loss of a Divine Tool was a huge deal for the Mother Goddess sect. The criminal had been caught, but now Eternal Knight was saying that it was impossible for him to retake the Divine Tool. What was the meaning of this? Even though Serene Dream Lotus Crown's political skill was not nearly as high as Eternal Knight's, that didn't mean that she couldn't sense the conspiracy lurking in the background. Eternal Knight calmly replied, You're incorrect, Serene Dream. I never told Su Chen not to hand over the Divine Tool. He doesn't have it on him at the moment. Then where is it? This brat is incredibly slippery and has already sent the treasure from Harpy territory. Right now, it's buried somewhere randomly underground. So tell him to bring it back. That's one of the conditions I've given him, Eternal Knight said as he painted Serene Dream Lotus Crown's hand. Don't worry, that Divine Tool can't have gotten far. Serene Dream Lotus Crown's heart softened due to his actions and she blushed faintly, I'm just worried that a long night brings with it many dreams, the longer we wait, the more likely something unexpected will happen, her thought process was correct, but unfortunately, she had no way of realizing that the source of these dreams was the person right beside her, the recovery process of the divine tool was doomed to fail, of course, Eternal Knight wouldn't admit that he had not asked for the item back. He would instead place the blame on Su Chen so that it would seem like he was the one who had reneged on his word. And since Su Chen didn't want to return the treasures to the Mother Goddess sect anyways, it was only natural that he would be more than happy to take on this blame. Don't worry, the Divine Tool will definitely be returned. It's only a matter of time. Eternal Knight comforted. What's more important is the immortal soul and the Neptune's eye. Yes, even though the Mother Goddess sect's treasures were all important, 
they could not even compare to the immortal soul and Neptune's eyes value. When Eternal Night used the future of the Harpies as his excuse, it was as powerful as a mountain bearing down upon Serene Dream Lotus Crown, forcing her to bow her head. She could only acquiesce powerlessly. Fine, I'll be patient for a bit longer then. I need you to be more than patient. You must also help me by helping him. I need you to open up the Mother Goddess Sect's ancient library to him so that he can learn more about the immortal soul and Neptune's eye. This is necessary for him to help me complete this marvelous plan, Eternal Knight said. Even Su Chen would have a hard time successfully completing something that the Harpies had failed to accomplish for tens of thousands of years. Eternal Knight wasn't just throwing a difficult task at Su Chen with no care for the outcome, since he had asked for it as a condition, then he fully intended for Su Chen to fulfill it, and he would accordingly do his best to help Su Chen. As such, not only did he need to convince Serene Dream Lotus Crown to give up on the Mother Goddess Sect's treasures, but he also needed her to help Su Chen. This included teaching Su Chen how to use the Mother Goddess Sect's five divine treasures, though of course, he wouldn't ever openly admit this. But as long as Serene Dream Lotus Crown agreed, the situation would be much easier to resolve. Serene Dream Lotus Crown never would have expected that Eternal Knight had even taken her every mood into consideration, and she fully trusted him. After some time, she nodded, got it. For the sake of this great undertaking, I will open up the ancient records to him. But there are so many records in there that he won't be able to go through them all. The most important matter should be to resolve the invasion of the humans and the beasts. Don't worry about that. Su Chen can speed dread, so just half a day in the library should be enough. The ancient records are incredibly exhaustive in their details. Doesn't that mean that he will learn all of our secrets? He has already made a blood oath not to spread our secrets publicly. Blood oaths were a unique technique of the harpies and they caused the Oath Taker to receive a backlash if the oath was broken. Even though Su Chen was relatively confident in being able to escape from the effects of this oath, it would take a long time to research, and it was impossible for him to spend that much time on an extraneous project given his current pursuits. He would just keep this loophole a secret instead, which meant that the Blood Oath's effect was quite reliable. Serene Dream Lotus Crown snorted in response. This guy really was born to be a bandit. He steals treasures, steals money, and steals wealth at any opportunity he gets. Eternal Knight calmly replied, Right now, I'm hoping that his skills as a bandit will prove useful. That's the only way he will live up to our expectations. He purposefully said our expectations, as if the plan had been drawn up by both him and Serene Dream Lotus Crown together. With his subtle phrasing, Serene Dream Lotus Crown had unknowingly fallen into this line of thought, and she responded accordingly. That afternoon, Su Chen entered the Mother Goddess Sect's library. A large number of the Mother Goddess Sect's records were found here. It included their history, all kinds of legendary arcana techniques, and more importantly, detailed records of the immortal soul and Neptune's eye. In addition, there was also information on how to operate the five divine tools. That was what Su Chen was actually after. 